welcome. This is our, our daily devotion for Wednesday, May the 27th. My hope is that you are doing well, that you are staying healthy, and that you experience the presence of the Lord as he walks with you. You know, we all know people who live life with confidence. I have a, a friend named Charlie who lives with a confidence that comes at least partially from a belief that things are going to turn out well for him. It's kind of a, an end-of-the-book mentality. It's like he's read the end of the book and he knows how it's going to turn out. And you know, I've often thought that Christians have every reason to live that way. The end of the book has already been written and our God wins. And that knowledge should change everything about us. That knowledge should change how we live each and every day. I think that's a bit of what Paul was trying to communicate to his readers in the text I want us to look at together today. I'm going to read the first few verses from Romans chapter 5 for you. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know, this chapter we begin here, chapter 5, Paul's turned his attention to the results of justification by faith. We see why he focuses so much on the issue of assurance in this passage. Because Christians are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. In justifying us, God has already pronounced his verdict over us. That verdict cannot be rescinded. That verdict cannot be changed. We will still appear before God when we die to have our case disposed of. But we can face that day with utter confidence since God has already decided the case in our favor. Justification releases us from any uncertainty or fear about that judgment. And living every day with that assurance is a tremendous source of hope. So much so that it changes everything. How I live in light of this is like night and day. It's like the prisoner who's been set free. I'm now able to live life without judgment hanging over my head. I'm able to walk in the freedom that, that can only come from God's forgiveness. It's a new life that I can now live. And this new life is characterized first by peace. In verse 1, Paul said, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. It's a peace that Paul described to the Philippians as the peace that transcends all understanding. Now, sometimes we think about peace in a negative sense as being the absence of hostility. There's peace in a home when no one is arguing. Two nations stop fighting and find peace after a treaty is signed. But the Jewish concept of peace, which is encapsulated by the word shalom, is much more positive. It describes a, a general sense of harmony or well-being. That peace that Paul talks about is a state of harmony with God that believers who have been justified enjoy. And that peace with God gives, uh, that God gives us in Christ has two aspects to it. There's the aspect of peace that Paul's referring to in verse 1, peace with God. We find ourselves in that situation when God is no longer hostile towards us and has reconciled us to himself. But there's also the peace of God, that inner sense of security and tranquility that wells up in our soul when we appreciate the blessings that we enjoy in Christ. Now, everyone wants peace. But the reality is that there is no ultimate peace that's possible without coming to terms with God. People who search for peace will never find it until they find peace with God. We can only enjoy the peace of God by first establishing peace with God. Now, I don't want us to misunderstand what the peace of God that God wants to give us really means. Given our Western orientation, we are tempted to think that true peace should mean that we have no more worries, no more problems. Some people even teach that if the Christian is exhibiting real faith, they will enjoy material prosperity and physical well-being. These people would dismiss suffering as a rather remote possibility and regard it as something basically out of keeping with the victorious Christian life. But Paul would argue that suffering is a normal part of the Christian life. In verses 3 and 4, he says, We also rejoice in our sufferings. 
Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. These sufferings don't contradict the wonderful blessings of being a Christian. In fact, God uses them to bring us even greater blessing. Because God uses suffering to accomplish his purposes. The trials of life are a means of testing and refining our faith. Trials give substance and strength to our commitment to Christ. And suffering actually leads to hope. Just like resistance to a muscle strengthens it, challenges to our hope can strengthen it. And when suffering happens, we can face it differently in light of Christ's completed work on the cross. Christians face it differently because we are living out of grace. In verse 2, Paul says, We have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Now, the Greek word for access that's used here gives the same idea as when we say that a person has access to the president. Now, only a few important people have direct access to the president. And Paul talks about access, and we might expect that he would say that we now have constant access to God, which we do. But instead, in this passage, Paul says that we now have access into this grace. It's a state in which the believer lives. God's giving of grace does not end when we become Christians. No, it, it continues to be poured out on us so much that we can be said to live in a constant state of grace. You see, when we come to the end of it, the true marker of a changed life in Christ is hope. Ultimate hope is the result of knowing that my future is secure. It comes from the certainty that believers will indeed receive what they hope for. Verse 5, Paul says, And hope does not disappoint us. No, God will do what he promised. And God poured out his love into our hearts. Now notice that word poured that Paul uses. God doesn't dispense his love in tiny measures. No, he has poured it into our hearts. It's the same word used for pour, which is used to describe the pouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And it's the Spirit that communicates God's love to us. You know, you and I can't see beyond the present. We can't see what the future holds. But we do know who holds the future. And in that, we find hope. In that, we find security. I'm reminded of a a family that woke up in the middle of the night because their smoke detector was going off. And as they woke up, they discovered their house was on fire. And so the father ran into the upstairs bedroom of his children. He scooped up his 18-month-old in his arms and began to pull his four-year-old by the hand. And they were halfway down the stairs to the front door when the little boy remembered he had left his teddy bear back in the bedroom. So he, he broke free from his father's hand and ran back to the bedroom to get it. Now, in the furor and the confusion, the father didn't notice that his son wasn't with him until he got outside the front door. And by then, the little boy was trapped by the flames and the smoke in his second-story bedroom. Smoke was swirling around him, and he coughed. He threw open the window of the front yard and cried out from that upstairs bedroom, Daddy, Daddy, help me. His father moved to that place right below the son's window. And he called up to him and said, Jump out of the window, Andy. I'll catch you. In the darkness and the smoke, the little boy yelled back, But Daddy, I can't see you. And Daddy shouted back, That's okay, son. I can see you. Jump. You know, none of us can see the future. But as followers of the risen Christ, we can face that future with hope. Because we know who holds the future. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for that confidence that we live with. Thank you that we live with hope knowing that you hold our future in your hands. Thank you for the joy and the peace that, that exudes from us because of that, that you fill us with your love. You fill us with hope that comes from your spirit, and that changes everything about us. Lord, may we be changed people, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of those around us, that as you pour into us, that we would overflow into their lives, extending the grace of God, extending the hope that comes from Christ, that they might be filled with it as well as they come to faith in you. Lord, thank you. We love you. We thank you for loving us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you in this day. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.